in the first bit of preaching. If I, had, if I had to work a full time job, I could preach as good as he could. That's covetousness. Mm -hmm. And I've heard people say that. I've heard people say different things. You know, well, you know, uh, I don't know why he thinks he's so smart there preaching. You're doing anything there. I mean, you, you, you this, you know, me, nobody, everybody else. That's covetousness. You're looking at other people, you're coveting. And you're desiring either their spiritual gifts or what how God's blessed them. Or, or worse of all, maybe you're desiring their sinful lifestyle. Huh. I've heard people say, huh. Look at that girl there. She, you know, dressed up, you know, she's not dressed right. She she comes to church and she ain't dressed the same. She's dressed as good as I am. What that really means is that I wish I could dress like she could. That's coveting. Because if your heart is right with God, you ain't going to look at other things and worry about the bad. I was in the grocery store the other day and I saw Brother Dolph. I don't know if you Brother Dolph, but I saw, I, I saw some guy walk by anywhere. So he had, he had a pack of beer. He's in beer in his car, in his car there. He got me right with God. You know, I had a beer. More than likely, he's going, I wish I could drink beer. And you coveted that. Don't covet nothing. <laughs> what other people are doing is none of your business. Anyway, how God's blessing other people, that's no concern of you, but turn my eyes back to God. Whenever you start thinking that way, getting God's word, it is not because of what will happen, it's what eating in your heart. Because what eating in your heart. I need this. And you'll start pursuing that more than pursuing God's word. Listen, you serve the Lord. I believe it's on my heart. You serve God and give God everything you have, God will take care of your needs. That's right. He'll take care of your desires. God will provide, and God will be a whole lot better than you. Mm hmm and God give you things that you did that's more important, valuable to you yep. than that. Than anything you can just sit after and you know, desire that somebody else has. Well, I wish I had a house as nice as so and so. Well, for whatever reason, God didn't give it to you. Be thankful for what you have. Covetousness also is an unthankfulness of what God has done for you. Be thankful. Don't fall into covetousness. We all are guilty of it at times. And call my heart into our testimonies and not into covetousness. And verse number 37 says this. Turn my eyes from beholding vanity. Lord, don't let me look at vain things. Turn my eyes. Cause my eyes to turn away from vanity. Lord, make my eyes turn away from vanity and vain things. What is vanity? Vanity is either means empty. Things is vain. You know, we don't make the Lord's name in vain. We don't make God's name empty or worthless. Vanity can be worthless or empty. And we look at things, sometimes we get so wrapped up in things of this world that are vain, they are vanity, and they mean nothing. What are some things that are vain? If it's something that does no good, it's vanity. We get short wrapping up things that is no good, it's vanity. If it's something that does not last, the test of eternity is vanity. If it's something that will not <coughs> help, if it, if it, if it, because it, it's vain because it does not help anyone. It can, be, it can be vanity. If it doesn't help, if it's not, not edifying anybody, it doesn't lift somebody up, it's vanity. Uh, it's vain because it does not build faith, hope, or love. If something that we're involved in does not build hate, uh, faith, hope, and love, it could be vanity and we need to move away from it. Uh, because it may distract from the things that are godly and worth. Listen, there's no thing, listen, there's nothing wrong with leisure activities. Don't understand on hobbies or things of that nature. But if your hobby distracts you from serving God, it's vanity yeah. and it's wrong. If it's more important for you to go play golf on Sunday than to be in the house of the Lord, golf is vanity. Now, I never wrong. I like playing golf and you know, the times I play golf. If you like to go hunting, but if you, you'll miss hunting on the Sunday, you know, you'll miss church service because you're hunting, um, then that's vanity. I don't care if you get the biggest deer out there in the woods. That's vanity. <clears throat> we're going to put forth things that will keep us, that, that replace needful things. Now listen, uh, because it has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ, it's vain. It, what we invest our time and energy in. Listen, sometimes we invest so much time and energy in things that don't mean nothing for eternity. We get so, listen, I like football. I like to watch college football. You know, I, I get excited. You know, I do watch it. But I can get so wrapped up in that. And if it takes time away from my study, time away from my witnessing, time away from visiting, time away from that thing, it is van it is vanity. If we can be so wrapped up in doing things with our family, that if our family time keeps us from serving God, our family becomes vain. 
it's empty, it's not right. We want to make sure we put more things there. We want to make sure that we turn away from the Lord that calls me to turn my eyes from beholding vain and vanity and quickeneth thou me in thy way. Again, this thing we talked about last week, quickeneth me, revive me. Lord, revive me in your way, in your law, in your word. Give me a peace there. So we see a problem, but here we see a prayer for revival. These last few verses is a prayer for revival. I got more time than I thought I did. <laughs> I shot through a few of those. I thought we were almost out of time. All right. Amen. Right. We'll, we'll spend some time on this with the revival. We talked about revival last week. But verse 25 says this My soul cleaveth unto dust, quicketh thou me according to thy word. And we went through this Psalm 119. It mentioned throughout Psalm 119, you'll see the word quickeneth, which means make alive. This is a revival thing. And so Psalm 119 is a revival psalm. Amen. It is a psalm about reviving our hearts. Here we see it mentioned twice. We see it mentioned in verse number 27, I mean, verse, verse number 37 and verse number 40. Verse number 37 says, This turn mine eyes away from beholding vanity and quickeneth thou me in thy way. And then verse number 40 says, This behold, I have longed after thy precepts, quickeneth thou me in thy righteousness. So, we, Lord, we need to be made alive. How do we get victory over covetousness? How do we get victory over looking at vain things? Lord, you need to work for me, you revive me. You need to revive my heart. Lord, you need to cause me. We mentioned he is a causative letter. When it's put in front of a verb, it, that verb means, that, Lord, you're not just teaching me, but you're causing me to learn. You're causing me to understand. Lord, you're causing me to turn away from my eyes from wicked things. Lord, you can't serve the Lord in your own flesh. You can't. Listen, there are a lot of times that I've preached a message in my own flesh. There are a lot of times I've taught Sunday school lessons in my own flesh. There are a lot of times I went door door knocking in my own flesh because it was something I was just supposed to do. And I didn't have the power of God in my heart. I just did it because it was an obligation. And I felt it. Amen. You can't live your day to day life without the power and presence of the Lord. Because we will fall into sin. We will be prone to do the things that you know, we have the appetites of our flesh that will lead us away. We need to be quickened each and every day. Be renewed, be revived by God's Spirit each and every day to live for the Lord. Lord, you need to cause me to do what's right. I heard someone say one time, said, you know, I heard a you know, person pray, said, Lord, if you don't want me to do this, don't bring it in my life. Well, that's nice, but guess what? It's still working in your life. Yeah. Heroin addict one time said, you know, you know, say, Lord, if you don't want me to do heroin, never have anybody offer me heroin again. Well, you know full well what happened. They got offered heroin. Mm -hmm. Well, it must be Lord's will. <laughs> You know, Lord, if you want me to do this, don't let this happen. Sometimes the Lord will let things happen so that you can get strength to overcome it yeah, and say no. And you know, Lord, give me the strength to say no. Give me the strength to resist temptation. Lord, I can't do this in your power. Christian life is not easy. It's not supposed to be. Amen. Amen. It's not supposed to be. It's not a bed of roses. Uh, I remember that time my dad mentioned when he was in the Marine Corps, um, Paris Island, they had a, a drill instructor on a poster with his, you know, pointing the fingers at I never promised you a rose garden. And because life's not easy. Then someone wrote my dad said, someone get you know, wrote underneath the bottom. I said, no, you didn't tell us about the fertilizer either. <laughs> so there's a lot of difficulty in life. A lot of hardships in life. In our Christian life, it makes us better people. It draws it, it causes us to depend upon the Lord. Lord, quicken it thou me. It stabs me. Lord, says this. Lord, quicken it thou me. Lord, strengthen me. Verse number 37 again says. Uh, verse number 38 says this, Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Establish thy word. God's word is established. God's word will not change. Isaiah 40 verse number 8 says this, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. The word of God shall stand forever. As Isaiah 40 verse number 8 God's word will stand for it. We won't find it later in this verse here that forever, O Lord, that word is settled. God's word is established. It is established. And God's word will not change. What we need is not for God's word to change. We need for God's word to change us. Amen. Lord, establish your word in my heart. Cause my heart to be established by your word. Cause me to change, Lord, that I'll be walk with you. Calls me, Lord, to, to serve you. Calls me, Lord, to live for you. Establish thy word in thy servant. Look at this. Who is devoted 
to thy fear. We don't fear the Lord. I mean, I, we do not fear. Devoted to thy fear. It's not just that I'm fearing the Lord, but I love fearing the Lord. That makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> Do you understand what the, 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 the psalmist is saying here? He's saying, establish thy word in thy servant, Lord. Place your word in my heart. It'll change me. Who is devoted to thy fear. I'm devoted to your fear. As well, you know, fear there means reverence and respect. It does mean reverence and respect, but you know what it also means? Fear. Amen. It also, you know, we, we also you know, talk about, you know, reverence and respect, but it's also used uh, to mention, it's also used as a um, 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 terror, dread. You know, the same Bible that says the Lord's wonderful says the Lord's dreadful. You know, the Lord's dreadful. He is. The same Bible that says God's a, 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 his love says that he hates the works of iniquity. St. Bible says that God is a love and, and, and compassion. says that he, he, about the Lord that I am a consuming fire. He is to be feared and we are to be devoted to his fear. You know, uh, my daddy loved me. My daddy cared for me and I had no doubt whatsoever my dad loved me. But I feared my father. And if I stepped out of line, I knew my dad was going to correct me. I feared my mother. I figured it was there. So they said something had to do, and we did it because if you were, there was you know, respect for my parents, but also I feared if I didn't do it, what was going to happen. Christians, they have no fear of the Lord. Yeah. We go about our day-to-day -day business. We'll sit. We'll 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 backbite one another. We'll talk about our preachers. We'll talk about you know you know each members of the church. We'll talk about this, that, and the other, and have no fear whatsoever of God. We're we're, we're assaulting God. We'll live in sin. And, and, and you know what, here's what it is, folks. Also, listen to this. We will try to bend God to our will. Yeah. It's okay if I do this. I know what the Bible says I shouldn't do, but I'm a special case. But I've served God so all, all my life. Remember, when Patrice and I just got married. We come with a visit of parents here. We live in Georgia. We come up with a visit of parents. And and um, Teresa's dad was, was pastor of church at that time. And he was on the phone with somebody about um, and, and getting frustrated. He said, Dave, you talk to this guy. He's just getting on my nerves. And here's another preacher here. Here, 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 here. He goes, forgive me. I didn't know who this guy was. And uh, he said, I was telling Bill that I don't have to pay I don't have to tithe because I've served God in my life. I, I used to teach at a, a youth camp. And I used to do this, and I used to do that, and I used to do all these different things here, and so therefore, I don't have to do this now. I, I done served God. I done did my part for the Lord, and so I ain't got to do anything else now. And you know, basically, that's what he was saying. And he said, so what do you think about that? And I said, if you don't want to tithe, don't tithe. I said, okay, you know, I said, but you got to deal with God about that. God's going to deal with that. I said, the fact that you think, I never forgot it, the fact that you think that you're some special case that the Lord owes you a favor. Mm -hmm. Speaks more about you. you know, I done, Lord, I done did this for you so you can get somebody else to do it now. Lord, I've done, I've tied for these years now. I've done, did, I've done paid my part. I've done, I done paid my fair share of what I've done. I ain't got to do anything more. I've done served the Lord so many days and all. You know, I, I was faithful five years ago, so I'm good now. You're bending God to your will. Yeah. You're, you're, you're trying to bend God to your will. Um, it's okay if. Uh, I leave my wife for this other woman because I think it's God's will. You're bending God to your will. It's okay if I don't come to church on Sunday mornings because I read my Bible throughout the week. You're bending God to your will. You do not fear the Lord. and There's no delight. There's no devotion to the fear of God. You're establishing your will above God. And you should be fearful. And you should be afraid. I wonder why all these different things may happen in our lives. Lord, sometimes the Lord's trying to get our attention. And sometimes things happen because we're in a sin-cursed world. But sometimes the Lord's trying to get a hold of our heart and get attention. 
and we're not devoted to the fear of the Lord. If I'm not faithful to church, what we do? If I slip and I fall and I turn my back on him, now he's merciful, praise God, and he's long-suffering, and I thank the Lord for that. But if I live in constant rebellion for the Lord, I will face chastisement because whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And if the Lord loves me, and the Lord saved me, and if I'm not right with him, I will face chastisement. Now, you say, I don't think we should serve the Lord because we're afraid he's going to do something. No, we should love, serve him because we love, we love him. My dad asked me to do something, and I loved him, but I knew that if I didn't do it, there were consequences. If I got stubborn and stiff necked my father, there was a battle to coming up, and I was going to lose. And we're the same way with God. We're not devoted to the thy fear. And you hurry through this right here. It's established thy word. Thy servant is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments. Now, reproach is mentioned throughout the word of God. Sometimes reproach, as a Christian, you will face reproach. Okay? You'll face reproach. I'm going to do these real quick. I ain't got time to go through these scriptures. But uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number um, um, 10. Hebrews 13, 13. And 1 Peter uh, 4, verse number 14. I'll talk about Paul. Those mentioned Paul and Peter says that they expected to suffer reproach. Paul even said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, that he delighted in the reproach for Christ. It means we're going to live for God. The world's going to not have reproach means uh, despise us or reject us. So we can expect as we live for the Lord that there's going to be some reproach in that area there. But the psalmist is not talking about being reproached for our stand for the Lord here in this verse here. I believe in my heart he's talking about God's reproach for us. If we live in rebellion and sinfulness, God will have reproach to us. Because what he says here, he says, turn away, cause my reproach to turn. Lord, make my reproach to turn which I fear it means I don't I, I don't want to be separated from you, Lord. Lord, I don't want anything to come between me and you. It's okay if the world speaks ill about me, but I want God to speak ill about me. Lord, I want you, I want to be right with you, Lord. Lord, you think separating me between you and me, Lord, any, any, any kind of division between you and me, Lord, just, just clear it out of the way. Cause my reproach, which I fear. Lord, I fear there's something between me and you. Lord, I fear that things ain't right between me and you. Lord, cause that to be turned away. For thy judgments are good. Lord, your world's good. Your judgments are good, Lord. Lord, so if there's anything between me and you, Lord, get rid of it. Let's just get rid of it, Lord. Let's clear it out of the way. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. We long after God's word. Lord, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken it me in thy righteousness. Lord, make me alive because of your word. Let your word, Lord, Psalm 51 verse 10 says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Lord, I have God's word in my heart. Lord, if there's covetousness in my heart, get rid of it. Call me to get rid of it. Call, show me what's wrong. Help me to repent, forsake the flee from it, Lord. And Lord, if, there's, if, I'm, if I'm spending too much time on vain things, things that doesn't matter to you, help me to turn from it, Lord. Help me, cause me to live right, Lord. The things in my life that's dragging me, that's keeping me from serving you, Lord, help me to get it over with control of it, Lord. This part of the Bible long ends with a longing. And this is this, this section. With a longing for revival. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quickeneth me in thy righteousness. Lord, do a work in my life. I mentioned before we pray for revival. We talk about revival, and you know what? There may never be another national revival. America may have done sin so far gone that we, we, we won't see a national revival. We may not see local revival anymore. It's possible that we may not see a church revival. But you can experience a personal revival. <laughs> In fact, I'll say this. Every national revival began with a personal revival. Someone got right with God. And then that person, the next person got right with God. And so if you want to have a church revival, it's going to start with a personal revival. Personal revival in your heart. Lord, I'm wrong. 
Lord, show me what's wrong. Lord, help me to live for you like I've never lived for you before. Help me to love your word like I've never loved it before. Quicken it thou me, Lord, in thy righteousness. Cause me to live right for you. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus who died on Calvary's cross for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness and your devotion to our heart. Lord, thank you in our pastors who preach today. Lord, view our services for us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.